Mirror's Edge, for all its faults, is exactly the type of game that I like to replay. While Mirror's Edge is nowhere near my top 10, I've played through Metal Gear Solid 2 around 4 or 5 times. Meanwhile, I've played through Mirror's Edge... Well, never mind. Even back in my party days, I was never a heavy sleeper. I'd wake up, see my friends out cold on the couch, boot up Mirror's Edge, and get pretty far along in a playthrough before they'd wake up. This was practically a weekly routine for me. There was just so much appeal to playing through this game that I had basically mastered. Sure, I never knew any of the speedrun tactics or fancy glitches, but as far as the intended paths go, I got to be pretty good at this game. It was only about once per playthrough that I would ever deviate from my standard paths. I was just pressing the buttons in the most robotic way imaginable. But that was fine. It looked so cool, I felt like such a pro. It was the perfect way to wake up my mind after a night of hard drinking, back when that was my routine. Why did I replay this game so often, when games like Thief 2, System Shock 2, Deus Ex, Bioshock, or even Half-Life 2 had so much more potential to put me in a unique situation I hadn't seen a hundred times before? Well, there's one simple reason. After playing through the Half-Life games a dozen times, learning where all the enemies were, learning about various skips, and memorizing exactly where I needed to go in every situation, I was essentially just skipping half the game. I was no longer playing Half-Life 2, I was playing finish Half-Life 2 as fast as possible. Well, in Mirror's Edge, that's the whole idea. While a game like Half-Life is completely weakened by knowing how to deal with every possible hazard beforehand, in Mirror's Edge, it just furthers the slightly over-the-top tone. Faith goes from being a skilled freerunner to being some sort of parkour superhero. The way that the world is loaded with convenient parkour opportunities stops feeling like a game design accommodation, and starts to feel like Faith just having supernatural luck, like this entire world was designed to make her look cool. The game becomes a playable action scene, in which nobody stands a chance at catching Faith because her movement is just too smooth to possibly outdo. Even the chase scenes become a joke, as Faith is literally able to outrun Jackknife. Mirror's Edge is a game that's all about perfection, and in a game about perfection, you don't need an incredible amount of content to get an incredible amount of playtime out of me. All you need is a bit of content that's worth perfecting. Now that I'm talking about perfection, and not showing footage of perfection, it's worth noting that I haven't played this game regularly for years, I'm definitely out of practice. Anyways, this brings me to the concept of scoring systems. Frankly, I've never been a big fan of them. Something like Hitman or Metal Gear Solid V always ends up discouraging me with their scoring systems, and making me not want to have fun with the games for fear of not turning in a perfect performance. For most games, I think your score should be based on how smoothly you play the game, not how much of a completionist you are. Metal Gear Solid 3 is a great example. To achieve a Foxhound rank in as little time as possible, you need to make it look like you're bending the game to your will, like you're omnipotent and totally confident in every action you make. That confidence is the mark of an experienced player if you ask me. It's like playing music, I'd much rather you miss a note and hope nobody notices if the alternative is missing a note and then going back to the beginning of the measure to try again. If you do that, you lose your flow, and the same goes for killing yourself halfway through a fight in Metal Gear Rising so that you can try it again without taking any hits. So for a flow-based scoring system, I think you need an invisible scoring system. Mirror's Edge is a fantastic example of this sort of thing. If you're doing perfectly in Mirror's Edge, then you aren't going to be stopping once, save for the elevators and other similar scripted events. The pain you feel when you mess up for even a second is practically physical in this game. The game is just screaming in your ears, you messed up, better luck next time. Because there's no tangible penalty at play, no combo multiplier going down, no text on the screen telling you to speed up, you don't feel the need to restart, you just feel the need to remember your mistake and try not to make it next time you play this level. And your reward for a quote unquote perfect score? You feel fantastic by the time you're done. Faster paced games are all about a flow state, where you forget that there's a real world surrounding your monitor, and you're thinking solely by the game's terms, completely immersed. Maintaining this flow state for as long as possible is the perfect reward for a solid performance. All this talk about flow state and invisible scoring systems also applies to a game like Doom Eternal. There isn't much penalty to being attacked by an enemy, you'll get that health back in a matter of seconds, but it's a telltale sign that you messed up and you broke your flow. This feeling alone is a perfect way to encourage the player to get better at the game and aim for that high score. That is to say, a playthrough of a chapter where you feel like you were in complete control the entire way through. This flow state is the reason Mirror's Edge only gets better and better as you get more and more familiar with it. 
You'll start out kind of rough, taking the less efficient routes, getting stuck on walls, dying from miscalculated jumps. It's really not that fun of a game at this point. But by your second or third playthrough, you'll start to have a whole lot of fun. By your tenth playthrough, you'll be moving through these levels like the wind. Suddenly, Faith doesn't feel like David going up against Goliath. Faith is the Goliath, this untouchable badass who's never made a mistake in her entire career. While a game like Half-Life 2's pacing gets more and more awkward as you learn faster ways to play through it, Mirror's Edge's pacing is only getting better.